Hello and welcome to Osuroshi Saturday, the show where we explore the deepest, darkest side of Japan and a lot of the horror all throughout Asia. Tonight I start with a very creepy and true story. I'm talking 100% IRL story in which a family disappears completely from their house. I'm going to go through piece by piece and kind of explain each and every member of this family and how they mysteriously disappeared and what eventually happened. It's a crazy tale. Come join me. Let's have a spooky Saturday. All right, so this is called the disappearance of the Yamagami family. And I've actually, I've taken a lot of notes because it's, it's kind of a complicated case. I'm gonna read through it and kind of go along with you as you slowly construct it in your mind. I will begin to build it with the different blocks of how this story is laid out. June 4th, 2001, the Yamagami family goes completely missing. They consist of a father, 58 years old, Masahiro, mother, 52 years old, Junko, daughter, 26 year old, Chie, grandmother, 79 year old, Saigusa. And I'm even gonna include this their family dog went missing too. I'm including that because it's really odd that the family dog would also go missing with the entire family. It really shows a complete and utter exodus from the house, which I, it's, it's wild. Here we go. Let's dive into the rabbit hole. 52-year-old Junko, the mother, was scheduled to take a business trip to China. She was also scheduled to attend a company meeting about the trip before leaving. And the main reason that they found that the family was missing was because when she didn't show up to work, her place of business actually called the police who went and did a wellness check and found everybody missing. Chie, the daughter, 26, was stopping by the house to pick up some makeup she had left, but she was also a full-time elementary school teacher and was also supposed to show up to work and did not. Uh, the father, Masahiro, was a everyday businessman, salary man, however you want to call it in Japan. Um, that means he's a suit and tie wearing guy who works a nine to five. He didn't show up either. On top of it, the family dog went missing and the 79-year-old grandmother who was, of course, at this point retired, but she did help around the house. Now, here are some of the oddest aspects of all these people missing, okay? Number one, no neighbors heard any odd sounds. The only sound that they ever report hearing is the slamming of the car door of the daughter Chie when she came to the house to pick up the makeup. That's it, no struggle, no fight, no loud noises, no screaming. The neighborhood newspaper man reported the family car was gone around 4 to 5 a.m. And this is around the last time the Yamagami family was seen. All right, next page is a list of odd aspects of the disappearance, as I wrote. Number one, front door locked, back door was open. Next, kitchen light on, all beds made, breakfast made. 4 to 5 a.m. in the morning, breakfast made. I know that seems early for some of you, but usually Japanese people, they wake up early, they get to work early, they start their day extremely early, P pretty normal. Yamagami pajamas were all missing. All the family's pajamas were missing and their outside shoes were not missing and their inside shoes were missing. That means when they left the house, they were wearing pajamas and indoor sandals. Now, I don't know where you live, but in Japan, that's not normal. Nobody in Japan leaves their house like that Maybe, maybe if you were the most gay-hen, ghetto-type person in the city, you might leave your house like that. But this is a country family. This would not normally happen. This, this is not proper etiquette. This is not a proper Japanese family. They, they just wouldn't do this, okay? Unless the house was like on fire, which it was not. It was found totally intact. Junko's luggage was readied and packed for her business trip as well as her travel money. So she had taken out, I think, around $150 for travel money. Of course, most of her business expenses were gonna be covered by her company, so she really probably brought that for spending cash. So not even like a large amount of cash that would be suspicious. Next up, they took the family dog. I add this again just because it's so strange. The whole family didn't just disappear. The family and their dog disappeared, which I know some of you include as part of the family, totally understand, but it makes it even weirder. Like, they weren't lured out of the house. They were all ready to exit extremely fast. Next is, it appeared everyone stopped what they were doing when they rushed out. So breakfast had been made, the beds had been made, they were ready to eat, and then they just disappeared. On top of this, the Yamagamis 
had no checkered past. There was nothing in their past that showed any kind of corruption, any kind of ties to crime. Even the father Masahiro, who usually is the owner of any kind of debt that a Japanese family would have, had no great outstanding debt. He had minor ones like a mortgage to pay off, which every family usually does, and car loans that were partially paid off. No major debts is what I'm trying to say. He was pretty much financially sound. So this makes it so much stranger, but it gets even weirder from here. This is where we really fall down the rabbit hole. September 7th, 2002. Police recovered a car submerged in a reservoir near the Yamagami house. In that car was the entire Yamagami family, including their dog. No signs of bruising on anybody, no signs of attacks, no signs of damage, aside from a little bit of bumps and scrapes on the car from going into the ditch, even the car itself wasn't very damaged. Police settled on a murder-suicide, saying Masahiro probably lured them into his car and then drowned them in the reservoir, but this just doesn't seem to work out very well. It doesn't really make any sense. What could he have said to get everybody suddenly out of the house, even including the dog, while still in their pajamas? Aside from him screaming, fire, fire, which if anybody looked around and was like, yo, where's a fire? Why would they have run out of the house like this and suddenly joined him in the car where he could commit a murder-suicide? Um, it, 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 really, it really doesn't follow through, and this is where I'm really looking to you guys in the comments section to kind of give me any kind of theories you would have. How would Masahiro convince his whole family to suddenly get in the car? Even if he did kill his family, why did no one try to escape? So there was no signs at all that anybody tried to break a window or escape or climb out of the car. When a car goes into water, you do have a little bit of time to try and escape. You can try to break the windows. And this was an older you know, car that didn't have windows that were super strong. Um, I think I'll put an image up of the car right now. You can see this is probably a car where you could most likely break the windows if you hit hard enough. Um, I realize panic sets in. I realize people freak out. Um, but you, when it comes to saving your own life, people tend to get a lot stronger suddenly. This is such a weird case. To this day, nobody knows what happened to this family or why this family disappeared and then turned up dead, drowned in a vehicle, and everything else in their life was just fine. There wasn't any kind of problems going on. There wasn't any major issue. There wasn't any checkered past. There wasn't any criminal connection. What do you guys think? I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Next up we've got our section called Know Your Yokai in which I cover one of many yokai. There are hundreds to thousands of them in the Japanese mythology starting all the way back to Edo era. The one we're going to cover today is known as Dodo Meki. Translation, the hundred hundred eyed demon, also known as the many eyed demon. Habitat, cities, towns, especially marketplaces. Diet, as a human, it eats a human diet. So I guess omnivore. Appearance, Dodomeki are cursed women with very long arms, covered in tiny bird eyes. They were once human girls who developed a penchant for stealing money. Because of their wicked actions, one day, hundreds of tiny bird eyeballs sprout out of their arms and transform them into this hideous monster. Origin. When Toriyama Seiken, if you don't know who that is, he's a very famous writer of all these different types of yokai. He started all the way back in Edo era. Described this yokai, he inserted a number of puns. The Dodomeki is described as being a woman with long arms. Having quote unquote long arms in Japanese is a figure of speech, meaning somebody who likes to steal a lot. So kind of saying like a five finger special. Thus, the Dodomeki has long arms, both figuratively and literally. The copper coin, or the Dosen, had a hole in the middle of it, just like a 5 yen coin or a 50 yen coin does today. It was colloquially known as the Chomoku, or bird's eye, due to its shape. This play on words is the reason that the yokai grew bird's eyes as a result of stealing copper coins. Money was also sometimes referred to as oashi, or feet, because it comes and goes as if it had its own feet. The phrase ashigatsuku is a common idiom which means to catch someone who has committed a crime. Legends, long ago in what is now known as the Tochigi Prefecture, lived a nobleman named Fujiwara no Hidesato. He had just been granted the title of Kokushi of Shimotsuke province 
in defeating the rebel Taira no Masakado. One day, while hunting in his newly acquired countryside, Hidesato was approached by an old man who warned him that some kind of oni had been sighted at the horse graveyard at Utsu no Miya. Hidesato grabbed his bow and arrow and went to investigate. Hidesato reached the horse graveyard and waited until nightfall when the hour of the ox came. An enormous demon appeared and ravenously began devouring horse carcasses. The demon stood over 10 feet tall and had sharp spiked hair and was covered in glowing eyes all over its body. Hidesato carefully aimed an arrow at the brightest glowing eyeball and fired. The arrow hit its mark and the demon roared in pain, fleeing into the woods until it finally collapsed at the foot of Mount Myojin. The battle was not over, for although the demon was near fatally wounded, it still had power left from its body, and it erupted in a torrent of flame. Its mouth split open and poisonous fumes spewed forth. The toxic air and intense heat proved too much for Fujiwara no Hidesato, who had to give up and return to his palace. When Hidesato returned the next day, the ground was blackened and burnt over a large area, but there was no sign of the demon. 400 years later, Muromachi period, the Dodomeki finally reappeared. A village had sprung up on the northern slope of Mount Myojin, and strange things began to happen. The temple's head priest had been suffering mysterious injuries until unexplained fires had began to break out at the temple. A new head priest, the virtuous and holy Saint Chitoku, was called to discover what the cause of the strange problem was. Saint Chitoku noticed that one young woman stopped by the temple frequently whenever he preached his sermons and recognized it as a dodomeki in disguise. The demon, terribly wounded, had retreated into some caves nearby to heal. It transformed into a young woman and had been visiting the site where it fell, gradually sucking back up all the noxious fumes it had breathed out and collecting all the blood that it had bled in the battle with Fujiwara no Hidesato. The village temple had been built upon the battle site and the Dodomeki caused the fires and attacked the priests to scare them away. One day, Saint Chitoku confronted the demon in disguise and she finally revealed her true form as a Dodomeki. She did not attack him, however. While frequenting the temple, she had overheard Chitoku's powerful sermons and they had stuck with her. The Dodomeki promised that she would never again commit any act of evil. Since then, the area around Mount Myojin has become known as Dodo Meki. There you go. All right, guys, last but not least, ghosts on camera. As you may know, if you've been a long time viewer of my channel, this is the part where we show a bunch of camera footage of ghosts captured on camera here in Japan. Stay tuned and watch closely and be ready to be afraid. These are some scary things, maybe not for the faint of heart, but those of you who want a bit of a chill in your bones, keep watching. In our first video, we watch from a first person perspective as a man smokes a cigarette and sadly laments about his troubles in life. Everything from doing poorly in school to the large amount of debt that he's facing right now. On top of it, he talks about losing his job in the same week as facing all these troubles. The video takes a very dark turn when the man steps to the edge of the walkway he's on and then takes off his shoes, a clear sign that this man is committing suicide in Japan, as those who do usually take their shoes off so as not to carry over dirty material things to the spiritual world. If that wasn't dark enough, after he commits suicide, we witness a face in front of the camera. My own personal theory, this is an angel of death. This is whoever planned to carry him over to the other side, or perhaps the yokai that was haunting his life and cursing it to the point that it reached. In our second seemingly innocent clip, we watch as a person records multiple Shinto statues scattered throughout Japan. These are often left here all the way from Edo era and are never removed due to the fact that it's considered unholy to do so. 
Although, while filming this one, the person gets a bit of a scare. As you can see, there appears to be a ghost worshipping close by. Okay guys, for this next one, let me just tell you, if you're the faint of heart type, maybe this one isn't for you, because guys, I don't get scared very easily when watching these. I can watch video after video, I can watch ghost sighting after ghost sighting, haunting after haunting, and none of these really get to me. But guys, this one got to me. This freaked me out. Whether this be real or fake or a hoax, the imagery alone is enough to just send shivers down your spine and leave you with trauma for years after. Watch what this person captures. I'm just going to shut up now and let you see just how creepy it is. Did you see it? Did you see it? All right, I'm going to repeat it two more times, and the last I'm going to freeze frame it on. This is just pure visual insanity. Okay guys, there you go, our very first Osuroshi Saturday of the October month of 2016. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. Any bit of sharing you can do helps a ton. And let me just tell you, if this for some reason gets shared a ton, or for some reason went viral, wow, that would be a dream come true. I'll totally bring back Otsuroshi Saturday forever. Um, until then, let's go ahead and keep this going for the rest of the month and see how it goes. Until next time, I'm unrested with the scary stories you requested. This is Otsuroshi Saturday.